The Boston Celtics may have gotten some bad news after they recently lost to the Memphis Grizzlies and snapped their three-game win streak. The Memphis Grizzlies are a very aggressive ball team. They're also very good on offense with John Morant. You also have Marcus Smart as well and Jaron Jackson Jr. But to be the Boston Celtics by six, there was some reason or some way the Grizzlies had to outplay Boston in order to win at their own home court in TD Garden. And I'm afraid some opponents have now figured out how to beat the Boston Celtics, which could be some bad news moving forward for Boston if they do want to try and be back-to-back -back champions this year. So once again, they lost 127 to 121. No, you did not have Al Horford, but you did have all your starters back in. You had Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Derek White, Chris Das Porzingis, and the rest of the group. So how did the Boston Celtics lose to the Memphis Grizzlies? Well, unfortunately... Well, Taylor Jenkins kind of had a plan that ended up working out really well for Memphis. And, well, they targeted Drew Holiday on offense. And we know Holiday hasn't played the best this season when it comes to his offensive game. Defensively, oh, man, he's one of the best Boston Celtics players out there. He's one of the best defenders in the NBA. But offensively, last year he was the best three-point shooter from the corner. This year, you know, we're not just seeing Drew Holiday making the shots that he normally is. And that's okay because you've got Jalen Brown. You have Jason Tatum. You have Chris Stats, Porzingis, Derek White, Peyton Pritchard. You've got so many offensive weapons that if Holiday maybe scores eight points a game, I mean, he's a guy that only averages about 12 points per game anyways. Well, if you've got a guy like that, then you, know, you don't really need to have him score constantly the way that maybe a Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown need to play because they're trying to also win an MVP this year. So now that you have the Memphis Grizzlies, who left Drew Holiday wide open around the three-point line, it's starting to make me feel like, uh-oh, have some defenses figured out how to take down the Boston Celtics. And I have a quick question here for you guys, and I I'm not saying Drew Holiday is the answer to this, but knowing that now defenses want to leave a certain player open from downtown or maybe even inside the three-point line, do you guys think the Boston Celtics have a weakness on offense? If so, who would that player be? Right now, Drew Holiday hasn't played the best offensively, but you could also put Derek White in there the last two games. I'm not saying Derek White is a weak spot. I'm not saying that we do have a weak spot. But if defenses are going to continue to single a player out, who do you guys think would be that player that now needs to adjust to possibly a new standard set by the Memphis Grizzlies and Taylor Jenkins' defense moving forward going up against the Boston Celtics? Because this could be game-changing for a lot of teams out there, not just the Memphis Grizzlies. Because when you look at what Drew Holiday did when he was left wide open, holy cow. Yes, he did have 23 points. You know, congratulations, Drew Holiday. Round of applause. But on 17 attempts from downtown, you hit four three-pointers. And then taking a season-high field goal attempts from Drew Holiday, 26 field goals, and you only made eight of those. You weren't even in double digits in either of these stats. Do you know what these percentages come to? 30% from the field. 23% from the three-point line. So, honestly, yes. The Memphis Grizzlies picked a good player to single out in this ball game alone in order to take down the Boston Celtics. And we remember last year when Steve Kerr came to TD Garden and they decided to make a game plan five minutes before tip-off and the game plan was to single out Jalen Brown. And Brown's like, hmm, okay, and just drain five threes in the first quarter. That didn't work. But the Grizzlies kind of took that plan and just geared it more so towards Holiday. And it's not that Holiday couldn't drain five threes in the first five minutes if they decided to do that. But Holiday doesn't take this many shots. He has never taken this many shots this season. So the more shots you take with Holiday, the less shots were falling. Last game against the Milwaukee Bucks, he took nine shots from downtown, 14 shots from the field. He had 20 points. A game behind that, nine shots from the field against the Cavs, only three shots from downtown. Holiday doesn't take shots like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum do. So he wasn't used to this type of frequency. So it does turn out to be a good tactic but they picked the right player, and now Holiday, I don't think Holiday is going to be uh, like that again. I think he'd be ready next time, but they were completely thrown off by this game plan, as they should. And Joe Mazzulli even said, I mean, that's a tough 
tough game plan to come in there with. He said it's a bold strategy. He's an all-star who shoots over 40% from three. I think it's a risky one. I thought he handled it great. We empower him. We want him to shoot any shot where he's open. And I think that's a huge gift because now we're going to see it again, and it's going to be great for us. Number one, you got to love Joe Mazzullo's response to this, just saying, like, you know, bold, bold decision by Taylor Jenkins and the rest of the Memphis Grizzlies who wanted to have this, but Missoula is now going to adjust. So, yes, this could be a new tactic for defenses, but that is a very risky game that happened to work out in this one scenario with Drew Holiday. You go to next game and you try to single out Derek White or, or Al Horford or Jalen Brown, it's just going to go downhill from here. But the reason why they targeted Drew Holiday in this situation is because we do know Holiday hasn't been 100% money on offense so far this season like he was last year. Because we know we love him from a three-point line. He only went 4 for 17 against the Grizzlies. But last year, he was the leading three-point shooter from the corner. And in the first three months, October, November, December, he was shooting 64% from downtown in that corner three. Now through the first three months of this season, he's dropped 34%. He's now shooting 30% from the corner threes. So he's not where he was this time last year. Hence, a decline in offensive production. Can he get better? Absolutely. And next time, a team hopefully leaves him open for 17 attempts for downtown, he can at least make over five. If you want to be great, at least make half. But that was a bold strategy. I don't see it working out that way necessarily moving forward. But I do want to unpack this a little bit more moving forward in the back half of the show. Plus, I am going to give some updates here on Chris Stats Porzingis and an injury update on him as well. So before we do hop on and talk a little bit more about this, I do want to tell you guys about our sponsor here on Celtics Today by Chat Sports. I'm going to tell you guys about Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in America. I play Prize Picks every single game day. You guys should too. Why? Because it's super easy. All you guys have to do is just pick more or less on a player's projected stats, and you can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Not to mention, they also invented the flex play. So even if all of your picks don't hit, you you can still win up to 10 times your money by playing the flex play. So if you guys want to go on ahead and get started, test out your skills. There's football, basketball, hockey, even Call of Duty for those e-gamers. Well, all you guys have to do is just download the Prize Picks app. Use promo code C. L-N-S. This will give you guys $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Download the Prize Picks app. Use promo code CLNS and you can win. You will get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks. Run your game. Drew Holiday took nearly 40% of the Boston Celtics first half stats. First half shots, I should say. Holiday has never been in this position before. If he is again, he will now adjust to it. But the reason why this could be so detrimental to the Boston Celtics, and not even a Holiday, maybe if it's Derek White taking more, nearly 40% of the first half shots, maybe if it's Al Horford taking nearly 40% of the first half shots, it's going to be an adjustment for any of the Celtics because the way the Celtics offense works is that they they thrive with being that spaced out, well-rounded offense. You know that when Tatum has 17, you know, not bad, but not great for the MVP that we're coming to love. Because you know Jalen Brown can pick it up with 25. You know Sam Hauser can come off the bench and have 20. The Boston Celtics develop Missoula ball, which is find the best open shot. So if that means making 12 passes and then you end up with a layup, not a three-pointer, that's Missoula ball. So they're going to give Drew Holiday that green light 24-7 because they know Holiday can do that. But Boston thrives in a well-rounded offense. That means everybody is making something of their offense. So when you have a player that's singled out, and that means the defense is getting a lot more physical on everybody else to just really single out Holiday, that means Brown, Tatum, Chris Stapps, White, they're all now being, some of them are being double teamed because they're not guarding Drew Holiday. That doesn't allow Boston Celtics to, to work the way that they normally had. Not saying they can't work anymore. But I do think that Joe Mazzulla is now going to have a challenge on his hands where he's going to have to figure out how to get 
the offense involved even when a team decides to single out a person. And then Chris Stats Porzingis, who did play with Drew Holiday in that game, he said, look, he's such a chill and such a selfless guy that he was like almost uncomfortable that he's so wide open. He has to shoot it every time, you know. But obviously, he knew that. You can catch on to the defense singling out Drew Holiday. But then Porzingis said, look, he's a very experienced player. But still, I think it kind of caught him off guard a bit. You know, we were telling him, just let it fly. And we'll live with the result tonight. He just didn't have a good shooting night, which, you know, can happen. And I didn't have a good shooting night. So Porzingis is also saying, look, you know, we definitely could have helped him. We could have gotten more open. But also in that sense, so this is the first time Boston has seen anything like this since last year when Steve Kerr decided to do this, and it was Jalen Brown of all people. The player has been in MVP conversations. So now when they just did it randomly on a freaking Saturday night in the regular season, obviously they were thrown off guard. But the beauty of this is, so I guess it can be good and bad news, Missoula loves a challenge. If you think this is going to scare Missoula away, if you think Missoula is going to go throw out all of his plays and just rewrite new ones or do whatever, you're wrong. Missoula is probably glad Taylor Jenkins threw something at him like this because you know he can get bored in the regular season. Now that they're going to adjust, I think the number one thing to keep an eye on is if defenses do this again, which player will they single out? And then how will the Boston Celtics respond when a player does get singled out like that, like a Holiday, who has the ability to take over in a game offensively, but just didn't have a good scoring night? Now you're going to have to adjust mid-game, and maybe that can be intertwined in some practices moving forward. So I do think that with the Boston Celtics now knowing that this is going to be something to look out for, Missoula and can just almost thank the Grizzlies for presenting something that we're glad we didn't figure out in a seven-game series in the playoffs. You just need to adjust to that lone man getting singled out. I think the Boston Celtics are going to be fine adjusting to that. I mean, they're going to throw things at him. This team is amazing on both ends of the basketball. So I think that overall... It's going to be, I think it'll be more tough for defenses to try to figure out who to single out than it actually will for the Boston Celtics offense to not be able to adjust to that lone man and help him score the basket. So I have a question for you, and let me know, does this new strategy worry you? I'm not worried. I think Joe Mazzulla is probably going to knock it out of the park with whatever he comes up with in terms of an adjustment. So I'm not worried. I'm going to type N for no, but you guys let me know. Type Y for yes in the comment section. And I told you guys I'm going to give you a quick little injury update here on Chris Stas Porzingis. He rolled his left ankle in Boston's offensive possession before the foul on Aldama, he subbed out, and then he went back to the locker room. So this did happen in the first half of this ball game, and I, I, I saw that that tweak. It just kind of looked like his, his ankle popped out and popped back in, and it definitely looked a little bit scary, especially since that was on the leg that he did just recently get surgery on. But the good news is that he did end up coming back into the ball game, and he seemed fine. He played fine. He finished the game, and after the game, we didn't really talk about it. So Porzingis did return to action, and he is deemed to be okay moving forward, but it is scary. It's a scary reality that you do kind of have a player that has been credited to be made of glass, but he came back in, he persevered, and he did try to help the Boston Celtics win that ball game. So Porzingis seems to be A-OK, -okay, but I saw that injury, and I wanted to update you guys here on Celtics Today by Chat Sports. So nonetheless, thank you guys for hopping on here on a Sunday. I know you guys are probably watching football right now, but the Boston Celtics will start the next round of games next Thursday against the Pistons. So if you guys want to go on ahead, all you guys have to do to show love to this channel is hit that sub button for me. I bring you guys news, updates, analysis on your Boston. Boston Celtics. So if you haven't already, go on ahead and subscribe.